anything on in the house. <laughs> he actually did a really good, uh, really good deal for us. Yeah. It's uh, he did some. It's a pointillism piece, like that's how it works, which I think is amazing just to see the guy like that size, like just working with little dots. But uh, yeah, he did a really cool piece for it. So, for so those who don't know what I'm talking about, if you get the WWE Network, there's a, a series called Legends House where all these old uh, WWE Le Hall of Famers and legends are forced to live together and uh, see how it all turns out. But at one point, Tony Atlas starts painting this thing, and everyone just keeps like, I think Roddy Piper kept looking over and goes, What the hell is he making? But that's great that, uh, who, that so many wrestlers have um, this, I don't want to say this talent, but this passion and, and for, the, for the arts and the skills to do it, that you can get so many in this industry to contribute the artwork to it. Well, I've been a comic book fan my whole life, and there was never any really good wrestling comics. Like, there would be sort of licensed books that, you know, felt like cash grabs and stuff, but I always wanted something that sort of conveyed the passion, of, you know, for wrestling. And, so I made this book, and then all the wrestlers who like comics like found out about it. Like I'd see them at shows. Like I sold books to Rob Van Dam and Shane Helms like in San Diego a couple years ago, and then they actually did stories for the book later on. You know, as fans of the book. So it's been really, uh, it's been really gratifying. I think you know the guys that are fans of, on both sides of the fence have been uh, really cool about helping us out. How many stories are out, and how many stories are you looking to make? Um, right now we have two full trade paperbacks and. Uh, we're working on another one. We should be done in October. And I just want to tell it as long as I can tell it. Like, I think wrestling's got an amazing culture and subculture. Um, you know, you can take them to Mexico, you can take them to Japan and explore all of that sort of thing. Like, there's just, there's no shortage of stories I can tell. So I'll tell it as long as, uh, as long as I can. And, and King, it's got to be very fulfilling to you when you're doing these cons and signings and whatnot. And of course, you know, the typical wrestling fans are coming with belts or DVDs and shirts and stuff to, to get signed. But then to see this whole turnover where not only are they doing that, but they have your paintings that you put up for auction. They have the comic books that, uh, that you've done the art for like that. So it's got to be really you know, self-gratifying that you're, they love your career as far as wrestling, but they're also now on board as far as your artwork. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun to uh, to to get a little recognition for the artwork. I remember when I when I first was trying to get started, there was a wrestler in the Memphis uh, who was the main star at the time. His name was the fabulous Jackie Fargo, and he sort of you know he sort of befriended me, and I did a lot of free artwork for him at the time. But um, he he started up a, a like a sign company and put his name on it, and then I did all the artwork and that sort of thing for it. But I, I kept badgering him and asking him, you know, it uh, just looked like I wanted to try the wrestling one thing, one tour, one time. And then that was what I finally told him. I said, look, if I could just try it one time, Jackie, I promise you. Well, he kept telling me, no, kid, you're a good artist. You, you've got a good future in art. You're going to, you know, you're going to make some money at this. You don't want to get into wrestling. And I kept saying, if I could just try it one time, I promise you, I'll go back to being an artist. I won't ever ask you again. So finally he agreed, you know, and I got to have one match. At least that's what I thought it was going to be. And then, of course, like I said now, 44 years later, uh, I'm finally getting a chance to get back to the artwork that I promised him I would do uh, in the beginning. You know, But uh, it, 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 it's one of those things that over the years when you're in the wrestling profession, you don't have a lot of free time. You don't have a lot of spare time. You're traveling all the time. So I didn't get a, as much time to spend on artwork as I'd like to. And still to this day, I like to say, well, you know, even though I'm not wrestling as much as I used to and doing commentary and that sort of thing, that I will spend more time on art. Very difficult to, to find that time. So, and that's why I do enjoy coming to these uh, comic cons. It's almost a double-edged sword, though. Somebody will come up and say, hey, can you know, can you do a commission? Can you do a Superman sketch or something like that? And I always want to do it, but then it's like, do I find time? You know, I found like last night. Uh, you know, here's my girlfriend and I are staying right there on on the South Beach, and I'm looking out at the ocean and everything, and and, and wanting to go out there on the beach for a few minutes. Instead, I'm just having to sit down and draw a Superman sketch. You know, at like one o'clock in the morning last night. So it's 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 time consuming, but it's fun, and and it is like as you go back to your original question, yeah, it is nice to get to you know to get the. Uh, the recognition for the artwork. I, 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 I got to be honest though. I've always just sort of taken it for granted, and the fact that you know people come up sometimes and just sort of act like they're amazed to see you know sometimes how good the artwork is. But it's it's always something that just came so natural to me. I, I was always surprised when people tell me they couldn't draw because it just. 
He's like, no, the king is Jerry the King Waller. So then, as that was going on, and then you eventually came to the WWE, did it bother you that they were still, you were still the king, but then they were doing King of the Ring, so there were other kings while you were doing the king? Um, I mean, it, it's, I can't say that it really bothered me. I mean, you know, I thought a little bit about it. I thought, but it's, it, I always looked at that as imitation, sincerest form of flattery. And the, the way the Harley Race King moniker came about was, I mean, Harley didn't even want to do it. He hated doing that. I mean, if you knew Harley Race personally, I mean, he was one of the very few gimmick people. I mean, Harley was old school. He was just a badass. He was just a badass, and I mean, he, he was a grappler, a wrestler, and that. As far as any type of gimmick, he used, he hated gimmicks. But the the truth of the matter was, the WWE was in the process of kind of expanding, taking over the wrestling universe, if you will, all across the country. And one of the few remaining territories that was still in business was our Memphis or Mid South territory down in the in, in our area there. And so when they came in to promote wrestling in, in our area, they realized that, uh, I mean, and what happened with, with uh, WWE at that time, you know, they, they were able to steal away, not really steal, but most of the wrestlers themselves wanted to go and wrestle for the bigger promotion because they were the ones that were seen on national television. Right. So they wanted that wider exposure. So the guys would jump ship just like, for instance, the AWA. I mean, Hulk Hogan was in the AWA, everybody Bobby Heenan was in the AWA, that was owned by Vergania, that was his territory up in the, up in the Northwest, and uh, these guys were wrestling for him. But all of them jumped ship, went over to the WWE, and then when WWE came back into Vern's original cities, well, they had all the, you know, they had all the known talent, so the people didn't know any different. They went, they went to those shows and they drew big crowds. Well, when they were going to come into Memphis, in our territory down there, I stayed, you know, I still worked in there, and I was the I was the main of it, uh, uh, the premier wrestler at the time, and uh, known as the king. So what the WWE did, they put that title on Harley Race, but when they came in and, and booked and, and, and advertised wrestling shows, they just said the king, and it was sort of a it was sort of a uh, almost like a bait and switch type thing, so that it would confuse some of the fans in the area and make them think that I was on the on the show. I wound up actually suing Vince McMahon and the WWE and won a judgment against them in Nashville where they held up the gate at the at the show uh, one night and, and Vince will tell you to this day it's like one of the few people that won a lawsuit against against him and the WWE. But that was that was how the that was how that whole uh, thing with Harley Race came about. And then later on they went with the King of the Ring tournament where they um, you know, kind of recognized a different king every year. But that part, once I was in the WWE, I didn't mind it, and, and like I said, I looked at it as almost a, a compliment. Well, gentlemen, we're out of time, so I want to make sure we plug everything.